Hey again, this is Jim Gavigan with Industrial Insight. So I got asked a few weeks ago when I posted on LinkedIn, you know, what is it you would like to see next? And really the only response I got was from Casey Wood. And she was asking me about the tools for, for data extract. So here's what she asked. She said, I would be interested in knowing, or I'm sorry, I would be interested in how you are extracting the data. Are you using the Pi Data Integrator or other tools? So that's a great question. And thank you, Casey, for asking that. Um, first thing I do before I, I use any of the tools, I, I, I've used all of them. And I'll, I'll talk about you know why I would use each one. But the first question I ask myself is, is this an investigation that I'm doing where I'm going to reuse what I do over and over and over again? If the answer is yes, I take one path. If the answer is no, I take a distinctly different path. If the answer is maybe, then I typically, you know, start with the no path, <laughs> you know, that I'm not going to reuse it. Uh, so what does that mean? So what that means is the, the first pass I typically take is I try to get the data into Excel in some form or fashion, <laughs> regardless of whether or not you like it. I at least try to get it into rows and columns or I can have a, you know, a timestamp as, you know, my first column and all my data points as the, the next columns in some kind of a time inter interval. So that's the, the first pass I take is, is getting it. And to do that, I use, typically will use data link. A lot of times the amount of data that we're extracting, you know, simply Datalink can't handle it. I, I've choked Datalink a number of times. It's really not designed for, for large and long data pools. So fortunately, one of our friends has given us a, a script that uh, we can bring in a huge amount of, of Pi data into a CSV file, and he chunks it up you know, by month so that if we're pulling a year's worth of data, you know, it pulls it a month at a time and, and chunks it really well. I know a friend of mine, uh, Rick Smith at International Paper, did the same thing for his company. You know, Datalink was was not doing well, especially in long, big, big, long data pools across their wide area network. The network just wasn't, you know, fast enough for him. And so what he did was he wrote a tool, and I, I can't give any of the details. I don't know a ton of them, but I know a few of them. I can't give any details, but... You know, he wrote a tool, you know, customized for them that it became an Excel add-in that allows them to do large data pools into Excel so that they can start using it in some of their other data analysis tools. So a lot of times that's the first pass that I take is, is get, get some data in, into Excel to start extracting. And that's typically if the answer is no or maybe. And the first investigation I do is typically not actually with Excel. I use that just kind of as a data repository, just for the row column uh, thing that I need. And so I'll use, you know, Tableau, Power BI, Simca, you know, whatever tools that I'm looking for, a lot of times can ingest an Excel or a CSV file. So it makes it, you know, pretty easy to work with. So that's one of the reasons why I do it. So if the answer is maybe, you know, that I might want to reuse it, again, I take kind of the same path. If the answer is yes, I'm going to reuse this over and over and over again, you know, the answers, you know, tend to change just a little bit. So what might be a yes, I'm going to use this over and over again? It might be where I'm trying to analyze certain production runs or certain events that are going on in my plant or someone's plant, you know, in our case, it's going to be somebody else's plant, not ours. So if it's something I know where I'm, where I'm inve investigating a bunch of production runs or a bunch of things and I, and I kind of know the metrics that I need, then I'll do uh, an event frame and then typically I will either use PyloDB Enterprise to suck the data out uh, using some of the, the SQL commands or uh, I use the Py Integrator for Business Analytics and then start using uh, Power BI or Tableau. So I think really the, the questions you have to ask yourself, you know, is really what I'm what am I going to try to do right now with this data and how am I going to use it? Am I going to reuse it over and over? And even if that answer is maybe, you know, maybe what I do is I do these data extracts first with some of the known tools to kind of prove the point, prove the value, 
test hypotheses, things of that nature. And that way you don't spend a lot of time developing like event frames and event frame templates and everything that you're trying to do there. You're not doing all of that work for not, you don't really understand what the benefit is. And sometimes your theories aren't always true. So that's why if, if you take, you know, this approach where I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get it into Excel. I'm going to get it into some kind of format that I can use multiple tools on it. You know, for us, sometimes we use Power BI, Tableau, and Simca, or a machine learning tool. All of them will ingest a CSV file. And so it, it makes it very easy when we're testing tools and trying to figure out what really works to get the data, clean it up, which we always have to do. We always have to take out the bad IO timeout shutdown, all that kind of, you know, stuff that we see. And then we can actually bring it into the tools that we want to use to investigate the problem. So that's the first kind of pass of, of the tools. Now, what I'll do is I'll do a video with some examples on some of the things that we've done and why we've done things a certain way and what some of the advantages and disadvantages of each are and take you through some of the thought process that we have. So that way, you know, we're not reusing things. We're, not, we're making things that we can reuse. Um, what I, I hate to see in, in our industry is that people do these data extracts, do these investigations in a format where nobody can reuse it again. And what we, what we really try to do is if it's a problem big enough, you know, tough enough, comes up enough, let's build something that we can reuse, refresh the data very quickly and easily and start our investigation very fast. So that's kind of the thought process we take you know, with the data extract tools. And again, I'll do another video that talks about some of the specifics of some of the techniques that we use and we can go from there. All right. So hopefully Casey, that answers at least this part of the question. I'm sure you have lots more after that. And hopefully for those of you that wanted to ask this question, hopefully it helps you as well. Thanks.